Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. I thought I was doing the um, rum, but I realized that's tomorrow at afternoon <laughs> at 5.30 Central. Okay, so here we are at 1.10 Central Time, and we have Seagram's VO introduced in 2011. 2011, 2000, uh, 2011, haha, <laughs> 1911, wow. Scary, huh? Okay, 2011, Seagram's VO. Now, it used to be 86 proof, age six years. Now it's 80 proof, no age statement. Like my friend David has said, they've done, they've, uh, what do you say? He always says, they watered it down. They watered everything down. I would like to say he's wrong, but then I keep noticing 50 years ago, 86 proof, 50 years ago, 90 proof. Today, 80 proof, 80 proof. Six year age, seven year age, eight year age, today, no age statement. I mean, if they don't put an age statement, what does that mean? They don't want to tell you about the age. It's, you would assume the minimum. Now, the minimum in Canada is three years. If it was above three, why wouldn't they tell you it was above three? I would, but I don't know. I've got, I've got, I've seen old advertisements for VO says this whiskey is, the whiskey's in this bottle or at least six years old. You see nothing like that now. It just says distillers since 1857. Yes, Seagram's well. That's when the company was started, but uh, they got bought out 19 years ago. Canadian whiskey, a blend, VO Canadian, product of Canada, VO distilling company. That was Diageo. Today it's Sazerac, but... Um, don't even bother looking on their website. They've been up. It's one of those stories where they're going to be updating it for the next five years. So you'll be able to find out nothing. <clears throat> Not to say that their website was ever particularly informative, but it at least had photos of the different bottle sizes. But um, integrity, tradition, and craftsmanship. But really, that's not my problem. All right. It is my problem in a way when I'm trying to do research. Jim Beam, Beam Centauri, their website's looking a little old and long in the tooth, but at least they got information. All right, I'm not going to keep going on, on and on about that. Here's something that you really won't find website information for, heir to the throne. Oh, no. I don't even know if this exists anymore, and it barely existed from what I could tell when I bought it three years ago. A perfect blend of Canadian whiskeys, I would say it's far from perfect, which have been carefully distilled and then matured in oak cast. That might be true, but perfect? Uh, yeah, if this was perfect, I would hate to see imperfect. I really would. Um, it's not terrible, but... <sighs> I paid fifteen sixty five, and that was like the highest price you could pay that it would be worth it. I think. And seemed like it's, yeah, it's a real cork. It seemed like it's been kind of underperforming. I don't think it has a chance against Seagram's VO. Is Seagram's VO fantastic and fabulous? No, it isn't. The prices will vary wildly for this between 15 and $20. Now, Winn-Dixie, I went to their liquor department today and I said, they've gone crazy. Some of their prices are totally beyond the pale of any acceptable form of human decency. I said, I don't know what they're trying to do. I guess they're just trying to completely go out of business. The company's already had bankruptcy issues at all Southern grocers, Winn-Dixie, uh, Jitney Jungle. But I said to myself, with these kind of prices, what could the future hold? I go to Matherns, I go to Walmart, well, Food for Less, you kind of can't really see their liquor, you got to ask for it, it's a sort of strange store. But those three have prices that are so much cheaper than Winn-Dixie, it is incredible. Uh, but I mean, uh, and then I saw the Winn-Dixie brand liquor, I didn't buy it. Maybe one day if it goes on sale. All it is is Sazerac private label stuff anyway. It says uh, worldwide. That's what it says. Worldwide Distillers Incorporated something. There's no such thing. It's Buffalo Trace. 
All right. Well, that's pretty light. Golden. Almost straw. Do I think Seagram's was better when it was nine, 86 proof in age six years? How could I tell you that? I wasn't even drinking that. And I probably wasn't even born when it was at that level. Hey, you know, Seagram's, they wanted to do stupid things and, uh, and, and, and lose the plot. It's a liquor company. They were spending most of their money on amusement parks and magazine companies buying out that. It got to one point in the mid 90s where the majority of their business was not liquor. Then they began to collapse. Then in 2000, the company's assets were dispersed to the whoever wanted to pay, you know, fire sale, liquidation, over, bye bye. Um, And this was not some run-of-the-mill company with nothing behind it. This was one of the biggest liquor companies in the world. You hear what I'm saying? Seagram's. This was no joke. However, they did collapse. Because if you go for 10 years and you got more money leaving than coming in, you got more withdrawals than deposits, oh, yeah, it's going to be a real problem. <laughs> When you can't pay your note, when you can't service your debt, you disappear. Alex the Beer Master says, good afternoon, Ron. Hey, Alex, thanks for watching. All right, Sazerac, that's a privately owned company. Also, I don't know what their financial state is, whether it's good or bad, I just don't know. They brought, I know they've been buying out, buying out, buying out. They've been running around buying out everybody. You start to wonder if they maybe got too deep in. I doubt it has anything to do with their website, but it makes you wonder why can't you, you know, why would it take so long to update a website with current information? Well, I don't understand that, but anyway, it might be more complicated than I'm thinking. I just say, I don't understand it. I don't know why it would take a year, months, at least, you know, it seemed like it would take it just a few days, but I don't, I don't know how it works. Coming up next on, uh, what is that, Saturday morning? Seagram's VO Gold, about $22 a bottle. I saw it at Winn-Dixie for $26.99. I said, they've really gone off their rocker. Like every price I saw, I said, they've gone crazy. They've really cracked up. And I'm really not gonna buy anything in this store. And I did not. I went in, had to shop a basket. And I bought not a single item. I went to Walmart you know, bought real stuff for real prices, like that a reasonable person would pay. And then I went uh, to racetrack, but um, I don't know what's going on with racetrack. And I went to uh, Circle K and I bought beer, 246, 246 tall cans. So 12, a 12 pack essentially of regular size beer. The Tecate Titanium, got a review coming up. Bought the Bud, Bud Light Clamato with mango. I never saw that before today. I saw it at Walmart, but they wanted $2.99. No, it wasn't Walmart. It was at Shell. But that's right. I went to Shell. I said, I'm not paying $2.99. I'll find it cheaper. I bet you. I did. $2. Bud Light Clamato mango. I said, well, <laughs> I'll get it. And then you had to buy two to get the $2 price. So, boy, the Budweiser Clamato Chilada Picante, the hot one. I'm going to talk to Jeremy Vincent. He might want to examine that. John and Ilya, too. And then I bought, uh, what else I bought? I can't think of it. It was the. I can't believe it. it's one of the. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> uh, Old English 800 brand malt liquor and Steel Reserve 211. The six percent version still reserve. I don't mess with that eight percent. Well, I can't mess with it. We don't get it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some malt liquor taste challenges coming up. Oh yeah, and then I went to Food for Less and I bought a six pack of King Cobra. Price was sort of okay. I don't know why it costs a dollar more. Dollar more. Over a dollar more. A dollar and fifty cents more than regular other than the other malt liquors they have but i said well it's the most convenient format six pint cans instead of getting two 40 ounce bottles and so we'll do king cobra versus a malt liquor king cobra versus another malt liquor king cobra versus another malt liquor so we'll have six taste challenges so it'll be king cobra versus old english king cobra versus um the um uh, the uh, Steel Reserve 211. I'm going to try to find Magnum. They didn't have Magnum. Maybe they'll have Magnum at that Circle K on 3188. I sure hope they didn't get rid of it around here because I'll never be able to find it. It's disappearing rapidly. Mm. Then maybe uh, that's three versus uh, Mickey's four, I guess. Um, Colt 45, five, if I can find it. And um, can't get this hurricane 6%. Well, we'll, we'll figure out something. <laughs> figure out something. All right. I can't even get King Cobra. I have to try to find that, says Alex the Bear Master. You can call your local Anheuser Busch distributor. They'll tell you. They will tell you if they have it. I've, I've had that experience before. Oh, now this air to the throne is pretty dark. It's gold, amber gold. And the Seagram's VO is just straight up gold, almost even a straw. Still, the Seagram's going to be better. If you call your local Anheuser-Busch distributor, they'll tell you. I mean, they'll tell you. They, I called them before, and they were like, what do you want? Hurricane? Eight, six percent? Oh, let's see. Uh, they said, okay, here's the stores that have it. They tell me they, they were right. I'll tell you. Everything is flavored now, though. Even craft beer is falling into that. It's all flavored. I don't care what if it's macro, middle crow, middle crow, or micro. It's all flavored. That's it. I was looking at craft beer. Strawberry, agave, nectar, blueberry, this that fruit flavor here fruit flavor there everything fruit chocolate coffee i said well why drink beer that just uses beer ingredients when you can have a bunch of fruit flavors macro beers tomato juice clam juice clam broth salt lime mango uh, doesn't stop but the beer industry is like collapsing very quickly, very quickly. Got craft beer companies going out of business every time you turn on the TV, the radio, the paper. Everything is fruit flavored or chocolate flavor, candy flavored. Tricks are for kids, cereal, beer. I mean, that's it. It's over. You say, oh, I hate you. I hate you. I'm going to attack you. I'm going to come after your channel. I hate you because you're against craft beer. I'm not against craft beer. I'm just watching, watching and reporting. I mean, you have to see it. If you don't want to admit it, you can be angry or whatever you want to say. You can't see that. You haven't seen what's been around, what's come around. And then you turn around to craft beer company saying, oh, look, we're making light beer. There was a big report on the Internet like Bloomberg News or something. The big trend, craft beer companies making light lager. I said, well, what, what is, somebody's been scammed. I mean, it's like the Sex Pistols said in 1978. You ever feel as though you've been cheated? You ever feel as though you've been cheated? Well, you've been cheated. You've been had, okay? The joke's over. And you've been the 
You were the butt of it. You say, whatever, well, well, distilled products are all flavored now, coconut this and agave flavor and cactus lime and vinegar and, 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 and uh, strawberry and cinnamon. Oh, I know that. I didn't say it wasn't. The purity is gone. Grant Matthew says they are pandering to the hipsters. Ha ha. They're pandering to something. It's got to be. I don't know what it is. Well, people love flavored beer nowadays, Ron, says Alex. Oh, they obviously love it. That's all you ever see. Hello, Ron. They're here in Gallup, New Mexico. Oh, on U.S. Route 66. The old, Well, Interstate 40, right? But the old 66. Hey, yeah. Yeah. You have a plan to motor west? All right, is the same thing. Anyway, nice to see you again. Okay, nice to see you, fat boyish. Um, so, I know, I don't, you know, it's no point being on a rant and rave about me going on a big rant about flavor products. That's the world in which we live. You like trick cereal? You like, uh, can't even buy Vienna sausage if it's not bourbon barrel flavored or, uh, uh, maple syrup flavored yeah maple syrup not real maple syrup mind you maple syrup flavor um uh, and then all the hazy ipas but I, that seems like 2018 was sort of the tipping point with for that you ever notice have you noticed the last six months seems like it's on a fade out? You say, well, after all, there's only so much cereal milk people can stand. You know, like the milk at the bottom of the cereal bowl with all the uh, coagulated cereal grain in it. There's only so much of that people can take. Yeah, right. They might have noticed that. Well, well I, gained, I gained 55 pounds drinking all this stuff. Well, yeah. Of course you did. This is pungent in the nose, pungent in the nose. Oh, wait, I can't look at the color. That's the Seagram's, it's lighter. <sighs> oh. Anyway, I knew that was heir to the throne with that pungent nose. I gotta hurry up. It's already 1.27 Central Time and I still have a beer challenge to do. Oh, that baseball game last night threw everything off track. And I left the game early. I left the game at 8 o'clock in the seventh inning after the stretch. We were winning, but I said, watch if they don't let that team come back, which they did. They tied it up 3-3, three to three, but then Southeastern won 4-3 to three due to a McNeese State error. Thank you, McNeese State. want to appreciate you letting us beat you 15 out of the last 20 games, 16 out of the last 20. I'm sure they didn't let us. It just happened, right? I gotta not look at this. Craft beer tastic, tastic. Oh, craft beer tastic says the craft beer industry has always been one sales gimmick after another. Seemed like in the early days it wasn't really. It was more. I mean, there was problems down. We're talking in the late '80s with like vanilla, cho you know, white chocolate ale. I remember, remember Dixie Brewing had white chocolate ale. This was 26 years ago, but that was minimal. But what you had was an onset of the very violent competition between the craft beer companies. It was such extreme competition. And they all had an IPA. They all had a double IPA. They all had a Hefeweizen. They all had a, an amber lager. They all had a brown ale. They all had a barley wine. They all had a pale ale. So you had 200 different companies with the same lineup. Mm, the flavors varied a little bit. They all had bottles, bomber bottles that were rather expensive. Then some of the companies, to cut costs, started coming out with the canned beer, Oscar Blues, and them say, canned beer, canned beer. You know, you, you some of you reviewers might remember when it was just totally unacceptable to drink beer in a can. You know, that was what Bud Bud and uh, Bush people did. You want to drink beer in a can? Go get your Keystone Ice, pedestrian. I'm a craft beer guy, and I drink out of a cask or a bottle. But then 
one company says, let's do canned beer. That's the way to go. And then all of a sudden I saw it happen like on a, on a dime, like immediately everybody pivoted. And even when they had video reviews, next thing you see, everybody's making a video about, well, you know, cans are much better than bottles. And I'm damn proud to drink out of a can. And I was like, saying y'all see what this just happened and then people are saying you're being negative i said i'm not being negative i'm just telling you you can't see this all right the craft oh grant matthew says there's the gimmicks but there's also the fact that these craft brewers are using flavors and way too much hops to cover up all flavors in their products they need to learn to brew clean beers Oh, well, don't you know clean beers are for corporate fascists, racist bigots, open-minded, progressive people use cloudy beers, man. You are a tool of the industries. You know, that's what some of them will say that. And you say, I'm not a tool of the industry. It's just like, why do I have to drink beer that tastes like cereal gruel? You know? I know what I'm drinking. I can taste. You don't have to dictate and lecture to me. You don't want to made the unicorn beer with star flakes in it, an essence of Fandango. I didn't. Well, both of these whiskeys smell nice, but I think this one on the left smells a little more hard. You know what I mean? Hardened, kind of hard, kind of. Less refined, elegant, less elegant. So I think it's the heir to the throne. I like to know what throne they think they're going to inherit. Good point, Grant, says Craft Beer Tastic. Yeah, he made a real good point. Now they're starting to do it, though. Founders say, we got founders solid gold. I say, what is solid gold? It's a clean, crisp lager made with corn, you know, flaked maize. I said, but I, that's Miller High Life. <laughs> We've been there already. Why are you, you a craft beer company. Why are you selling us Miller High Life for $12 or a six pack? I'm supposed to be impressed by this. Okay. And, and then people will say, oh, no, 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 we're coming after you. You can't be in our hangout anymore. Oh, you got mixed up. I wasn't trying to be in your hangout. I watch games at night. I joined just to be courteous. I wasn't that interested in that. I'm like the little kid on the street saying, but the emperor has no clothes. He's got his underwear on. He's not wearing any new outfit. People are saying he is wearing a new outfit. Look at those beautiful fabrics. Look at those rich textures. Only a fool wouldn't notice that. Only a fool, a fool. That fabric is designed for geniuses to see. You can't see it. You're not a genius. If you can't see that trick cereal craft beer is wonderful, you are an idiot. Oh, I must be an idiot. Thumbs up, Grant, with y'all. Oh, fat sport. Okay. I'm, I'm doing a beer rant I'm, I'm on a whiskey taste challenge, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was getting mellow on the fumes, the 80 proof fumes. <laughs> Oh, come on, y'all. It's time to get nice. Well, actually, the aromas aren't that differentiated. Hey, it happened to me this morning. I was a big shot, a big shot, until I looked at the label and I was wrong, and then I felt so humbled and dismayed. I thought I was a big shot, didn't I? But I wasn't. I was just regular old Lipton's tea. All right, not I was not Tannis root. Okay.
Oh, wow, man, it's mellow. That's yeah, pretty mellow and smooth, man. It's oh so mellow and oh so smooth. Makes you think it's, yeah, that stuff. Okay, is it is it bountiful with flavor? No. Was it designed to be? No. Now let's go over here. <laughs> ha ha ha. It's not so smooth. Ha ha ha. It's got a little rough finish. Ha ha ha. It's got that little strange twinge at the end, that little tweak at the end. Ha ha ha. Ain't no way that's coming from Seagram's. Well, <laughs> that pretend company. Ain't no way that's coming from Sazerac. You say, yeah, but Hartley Brandy comes from Sazerac. Yeah, it's true. Still, it doesn't have that little twang to it. It has overt badness to it. It doesn't have like covert badness. I, 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 I prefer the overt badness. Like, it's up front telling you, yeah, it's a cheap brandy. But the ones that try to come at you smooth and then they hit you hard at the backside, you know what I'm saying? On the on the finish, it's like, yeah, you know this is a private label. And I'm like, you right, you right, you got me. I paid fifteen sixty five. You got me. Vio, it's an oddity in a way. You know, 35, 40 years ago, it was the number one selling imported whiskey in America. Yeah, and the Cosby Show was number one. But that was then and this is now, and it ain't the truth. Victor Alexander says, I like a standard lager. Hi, Ronald. Hey, Victor Alexander. Fat Boyish says, they need more taste, less craft. <laughs> oh, Craft Beer Tastic says, I think it's comical how these swill brewers like AB InBev can also brew amazing craft beers if they really want to, like the Budweiser American Ale from back in the day. Yeah. And they could literally mimic anybody else's craft beer and do it to perfection if they wanted to. You know what I mean? They just make money. You know, I was drinking Budweiser yesterday before the baseball game, and I was saying to myself, uh, but they can do anything, you know. I mean, so if you can make a lot of money, if you can make, I don't know, if you could sell 15 million barrels of something that's so not great, why do a bunch of re research and development and, and on stuff that's going to sell hot for a month and then people will forget about it. You know what I mean? I want to try the new Budweiser uh, Red American Lager, the, Ale, uh, Lager, the Discovery. I guess I'm going to have to get it at my therms. I tried to look around for cheaper. Nobody else has it anyhow. $14.99 a 12-pack. I don't see that it is any kind of value, any kind of value, but heck, I'll do it. I have no attachment to a grocery store. I buy where it's cheapest. Okay, I'm sorry. That's the way I operate. Need to crack open my bottle of whiskey. Mmm, says Faddish Boy. Yeah, you could join one of these taste challenges one day. You could do a duo taste challenge. That would be interesting. It's never happened. It's never been done. I guess it's been done. I've seen some duo blind taste tests. They're hard to follow, though, because they're there's too many beers, and so it's like they're describing this and that and this and that and this and that. And then pretty soon you start losing track. Like, I can't keep up with all these descriptors. You know, and they're saying this one is ratio calisthenics, and that one is nutmeg chiropractor. And, and then you say, I don't, I don't know. It's just a bunch of different beers. <laughs> all right. I'm going to say this is heir to the throne, and it's not as good as VO. 
please do not go out and buy a sequence VO and think it's full of flavor. It is not. That is not what makes it good. Okay. What makes sequence VO good is that it's smooth, it's reliable, and it always tastes the same. It's like Budweiser, you know, no one's going to come on the internet talking about it's the greatest tasting thing in the history of beer. But the reliability factor, the consistency factor is so important. And with VO, you're going to know what you're going to get every time, even though Sazerac is going to take it over. But Sazerac is a major company. That's Buffalo Trace. They know their craft. They'll do it. You know what I mean? It's like Miller High Life. Every time it's going to be the same every time, except it seems like in the last few years, they've actually improved it. It's all you always, it's everything you always wanted in Miller High Life and more, meaning less cooked vegetable taste. They cleaned it up, which is who, who's going to complain about that? Um, heir to the throne. I would say you're not missing anything. You are missing something because it is unique. So if you can't taste it. it. It has some strange qualities. It has some unique qualities. I'm not saying they're really good necessarily, but they're unusual. Mm. I still have um 65% of the bottle left. So uh, I don't think much is going to change on the flavor appreciation of it, but it's uh, it's something to look at. What up, gentlemen, says Beer Chugs. Nothing. Just tasting some whiskey. Craft Beer Tastic says production cost versus super cheap production. Why not serve what costs almost nothing to produce if people buy it? That's how they think. It's an important thing to consider because if people are buying it, you may as well keep making it. Look at Bush Light. I don't think anybody in the world's ever accused it of being super flavorful, right? But you say, yeah, but it's it's like the one of the top ten selling beers in America for thirty years, right? And why is that? Because it's almost like drinking four point one percent water, seltzer water, mineral water. Because it has no offensive flavors, it can pair well with any kind of food, and it's always the same. It's always the same. It's always the same. It's always the same. You're not going to get a bush light and say, this is an off batch. That doesn't happen. If they put out an off batch of bush light and it came out on the news around the country that the bush light batch was somehow wrong, they're going to be finding bodies on the other side, the levee, you know, out by the dumpsters. These are not people that are playing games. I mean, they're going to be a lot of a lot of people are going to get fixed up. Um, yeah, right. Like you're going to find a bad batch of Jack Daniels. That will not happen. That cannot happen. It will not happen. You say, well, Jack Daniels ain't the greatest thing. I know that. We all know that. Everybody knows that. But it's not like a bad batch is going to occur, okay? Talking about Bush, that was, I had a very strange email. I got a very strange email from Bush yesterday. And it was like, hey, it was saying, uh, it's not you, it's us. I said, what does that mean, it's not you, it's us? So I checked the web, the, the email. It says, sorry for our little fallout, but we're going to try to do better. Um, so... Here's an opportunity to join Bush Bucks, which I have no interest in joining. Somewhere you turn in all these receipts for Bush and you can earn points to get apparel and stuff. I was like, it would take, I'd be 100 years old before I earned enough receipts to get apparel because I never hardly buy Bush. And I was like, why would they send me this email? I don't know anything about a fallout or a consternation or trouble with Bush. It's like, what are they talking about? made no sense. It was very weird. And I never contacted Bush to my knowledge, except maybe I asked him one time, like, um, where can I find this Bush signature? That was like six years ago. <laughs> I 
I've never got such a strange email. I did get some empty cans from Paul Honor once a few months ago saying, we got some new Paul Honor coming out. Here's to what the cans are going to look like. There was no beer in it. But then I never got any regular beer. And then uh, Darwin, Spear Reviews, he said he emailed the company and said, why did you send me empty cans? And then they said, oh, we're sorry. We'll send you some cans full of beer. And I was like, well, I've had Paul Honor before. I'm not writing them an email about it. They know my address, obviously, so if they want to send it to me, they can send it. If not, fine. Uh, oh, yeah, Seagram's is a classic, man. This is the modern classic. You understand what I'm saying, the modern classic. It's the modern 80 proof, if you want to call it watered down version from the last 40 years. Okay, well, you know, hey, that's what it is. Fattish boy said, okay, Jimmy, y'all be safe and have a great day. Victor Alexander says, two mugs, two mugs. Y'all too, um, I'm about to get off of this, but uh, till I do the beer challenge in a little bit. But I'm going to say this is the VO. Sorry for the rant and rave. But some people say, I like those rants. <laughs> I like those rants. Gives me a chance to spout off, you know, because I can't do that to my, you know, I can't spout off to my neighbors and my family because they have no interest in this industry. They could care less. You know what I'm saying? Like no, no one in my immediate family or friends cares a thing, a wit about beer, wine or liquor, aside from drinking prodigious amounts. But you know what I mean? They drink it. They don't care about it. You understand? But the hobbyists on the Internet, they like those kind of topics. V.O. Yes, S. Seagram's. <laughs> Seagram's. And H. Heir to the throne. Well, I'm sorry for you, heir to the throne, but you could not match up. But we pretty much knew that going in. We knew that going in. So if you have a choice to buy Heir to the Throne, which you're not going to have the choice since you're never going to see it. Now watch tomorrow. Somebody's going to send me some photos. I get it. Look at the shelf full of it. Or if you have a choice to buy Seagram's VO, I think we pretty much know what the choice would be. Now I got VO Gold. I got Royal Canadian. I forgot about Royal Canadian. I was like, why do you always forget about Royal Canadian? So um, Royal Canadian is probably coming Tuesday morning. And then uh, the uh, Canadian Club 12 year will be coming Tuesday later in the day. I got to double up next week. I have no choice. I have to double up. But that'll probably be the last double ups for the rest of 2019. Yeah. Well, maybe one more. Yeah but not too many. Okay. Thanks for watching this video production. Let's see any, any last comments. Hey, Ron, you, you hope you've had a wonderful rest of your day and it was nice talking to you later. Thanks, Alex. And if you check back in an hour, we got a beer challenge coming up. Brown lager versus brown lager, dark beer, dark beer versus dark beer. You may not be excited y'all, but I'm excited to a large extent.